I think for the subscribe members, I took a basic lecture on psychiatry. It's nothing much, but it was some foundational course, especially for people who subscribed to Med Expert people. We took that lecture. What we have covered it in those lectures are some terms, for example, term, terms like alexia, alexithymia those things we have covered over there and also we covered on delusions hallucinations defense mechanisms all those stuffs we are covering so i am going to start here assuming that most of you people already know these things okay that's how i am going to begin and i am not a basically a psychiatrist but specialist registrar in tropical medicine and infectious disease so what i am going to do right now is like i'm going to teach you what exactly you need for psychiatry for passing your mrc if you want to and even for patients my lecture is nothing like i'm teaching for mrc if you want MR. my concept is not like that you know psychiatry that's it whatever is essential for the mrs entire mrc program if you listen to this it should be more than enough okay all right, we are going to start with some case histories, some MCQs, some videos. We're going to begin like that. Okay, stay relaxed. Let's go. Okay, here's the case challenge. Uh, anyone who getting the case, they can type the answer here. We have taught our subscribers how to do that. I'll teach you to any MCQ. Just learn to underline the right points. If you are taking an exam in a computer based setting, just mentally map it and underline the right points here's the case a 21 year old woman okay she presents to a and d accident accident and emergency department with acute onset of left-sided body twitching after minor accident in which she hit her head just no make a note of it this is a minor accident and there is a twitching here Okay, an eyewitness to the event reports those symptoms lasted for 20 minutes, during which time her eyes were tightly closed, her breathing was rapid, physical examination, laboratory investigations, imaging studies are normal. Okay, over the next several weeks, she begins experiencing episodes of full body movements with side to side head shaking that is lasting for about 5 to 10 minutes in the week before initial symptom onset. The week before initial symptom, what happened is her boyfriend, for whom she also worked, broke up with her. She had a conflict with her parents. She and her boyfriend have since reconciled. And there is no reported history of abuse, but there is a family dynamic of high expectations of the patient. Neurological examination, electroencephalogram during a typical episode is normal. Now, who is going to tell me the diagnosis? What is happening here? A 21 year old woman just see an MCQ, see each and every MCQ like an actual patient you are dealing with day to day life, easily will diagnose. This woman is coming to you, some twitching, she had a minor accident, and all your investigations, physical examination is perfectly normal. What do you think this could be? She had a recent breakup with a boyfriend. And she has the symptoms. Anyone knows the answer? Just please feel free to type in the chat. You can make mistakes. It's air to be a human. We can make mistakes. Yeah. You can type even if it is. Come on. Panic attack. And um, Dr. Panic attack. And I would consider that as a DD, but again, panic attack symptoms will be different. We will see panic attack. We will see. I'll show you actually how patient will present in a panic attack anxiety conversion disorder somebody is little close who is that dr karish conversion disorder it's in, somewhat close to that i'll tell you the answer this is called a somatization disorder excellent dr kanwal javed he got it nailed it somatization disorder now listen to me guys like psychiatry per se doesn't have typical mrcp psychiatry guidelines most of the people follow dsm-5 criteria so first thing is a somatization disorder you should know what it is you should be able to diagnose it you should be able to 
tell what is the first line treatment and the most appropriate treatment most appropriate treatment you don't need to know that maybe for completion sake you can know one or two points because that will be handled by a psychiatrist because you can't prescribe any medications like that okay what will help you to find if it is a somatization disorder or not what dsm5 the latest one that says dsm is diagnostic statistical manual okay the patient has one or more somatic symptom that are distressing or result in significant disruption of life there will be some symptoms this patient will complain like what we saw just now abnormal flinging movement of the arm or movement side to side okay also there will be this patients will be typically present with seriousness of one symptom they will come and actually present and tell you like you know i'm having the seizures i'm having this kind of quick like episode i'm fainting down i'm vomiting they will be very serious when they are telling this to you and there will be high levels of anxiety will be there and there will be excessive time and energy devoted to these symptoms what they mean typically is in the previous history we carefully watch you will notice a term called side to side head shaking and also this things are just clues that is giving that this is a somatoform disorder okay or a somatic symptom disorder all right typically any one somatic symptom may not be continuously present typically more than 6 months it won't present for example if the patient is coming to you they will tell i am having some fits that will be for 6 months after that when the patient comes they will tell i am having severe headache then later they will come and tell i lost consciousness i lost my memories this is how a somatization disorder occurs so this is a somatization disorder i hope you guys will be able to get and always there will be some cause will be there some emotional stress some physical stress something will be there like in the last case there was a relational issue she got a breakup as a result she presented like that there will be some cause will be there some abuse or something so to cope up with that the patient will present like this kind of So that is a somatization disorder i hope you guys are getting it and also in mcqs they will give you something sometimes this patient will come and tell they are going blind or they can't see and they will simply tell the patient report they can't see okay so typically in a clinical setting what do we do we do a confrontation test just we make the patient sit right in front of us ask them to see which finger is moving and we can also do with our eyes closed and patient eyes closed to check the visual field in a clinical setting you have to do something called perimetry in the perimetry what you will find you know what is seeing here what you are seeing here is called as a spiraling defect as you move your finger they will tell oh i can't see in this direction by the time you move the finger little down i can't see in this direction and that direction you will see a spiraling defect this is a classical thing they will mention you in mcqs the spiraling defect as far as consider whether it is a somatization disorder this is how this patient presents i hope you are now very well aware of what is a somatization disorder have a clear cut concept have a clear cut idea about what dsm says that's it done you can diagnose okay now somebody said about conversion disorder okay what is the actual difference between conversion disorder and the somatization disorder we are going to see in the upcoming slides but in case of a conversion disorder when you will call it as a conversion disorder is the patient should be having more than one symptoms of voluntary motor or sensory function disturbance will be there mostly this patient will present with a loss of tone conversion is always remember it is always a motor or a sensory symptoms more than anything else somatization disorder people can tell anything even loss of consciousness or something but conversion disorder typically they will give a complaint they have some motor symptoms that will be their complaint or some sensory symptoms they will come and tell you clinical findings will definitely provide what you call as an incompatibility between the symptom and recognized neurological or medical condition always the physical exam itself will alert you that this patient is not having that actual condition there is something else going on here okay and that's the thing point c they have also 
described described in case of a dsm the symptoms or deficit is not explained by any medical or mental disorder conversion disorder what they will do is they will come to you suddenly and they will tell i lost both i am getting weak in both my legs they will collapse right in front of you if you take them and if you examine their lower limbs everything will be normal cranial nerves will be normal that is a typical conversion disorder okay this conversion disorder uh, should be definitely differentiated with somatization disorder and also some other disorders which we are going to see okay the symptom of deficit causes clinically significant distress and impairment because these patients will go ahead and mimic the same symptoms in their workplace in their personal life everywhere okay now the next thing you, you need to know is the difference between a somatization disorder and a hypochondriasis okay this somatization disorder is most commonly in women but when it comes to hypochondriasis it's most commonly in men and women both of them are affected i hope you are you know what is a hypochondria hypochondriac patient how they will come they will just have a degree of hair loss they will come and tell whether it's a cancer and my hairs are falling they will have some weight loss they will think they may having hiv they may be having something else they may be having some loose tools i have seen patients like that they will come and they will do their own google search and they will come and tell that doctor i may be having an ibd i may be having a crohn's i may be having a <clears throat> ulcerative colitis all these things are available freely on the internet so these people happily go and search about all these things and come repeatedly they will come they won't believe even if you give a opinion that it's not that you are perfectly fine you may need some psychological help they will get sometime mad at you and they will go to another trust they will meet another doctor another gp another registrar they will keep going and that's how a hypochondriac reacts okay and in somatization disorder they will always tell some sickness or disability but there won't be any diagnosis here this people will make their own diagnosis and come to you always they will tell some serious disease some cancer some hiv some ibd some stroke some tumor something they will have their own diagnosis and they are coming to you you have to consider the possibility of hypochondriasis always remember this fact in case of a somatization disorder or a conversion disorder they won't come to you with any diagnosis but in a hypochondriac they will come with a diagnosis okay and even if you don't read all these things couple of things which i am taking you should be knowing okay to just diagnose it better and mark in the mcq perfectly okay when it comes to psychological symptoms in somatization disorder people will have a depressive symptoms i hope how a depressive patient looks and how an anxious patient look you should be able to differentiate between this two depressive patient like if you can typically see the way of dressing sense can be little altered and the way they talk will be little altered they'll be slow they'll be thinking a lot whereas an anxious patient will be more anxious and they will keep talking they'll be sweaty they'll be jittery they'll be fidgeting around typically how a hyperthyroid features that is more of an anxious feature depressive is more like a hypothyroid person that's how i can tell you how you can easily remember these things okay they'll be anxious whereas in hypochondriac patient they'll be phobic and obsessively compulsive overly controlled and perfectionist like that they will present okay this is the four things you should be knowing to differentiate between a somatization disorder and a hypochondriasis okay and hypochondriasis won't have any underlying things like a, for example like what we saw in a somatization case there was a breakup or some family issues or something going on in the job there may be having some rub off with the superiors or they are about to get laid off or something like that or they couldn't pay a bank loan all these things you will find in somatization disorder but in hypochondriasis you won't find any of these things okay this is a picture depicting a hypochondriac disorder they themselves diagnose themselves so in uk you won't be able to get medicines sad thing in many countries like india they can diagnose themselves they can order those medications from pharmacy and they keep taking the medications by diagnosing themselves even if they fail to diagnose there is always this pharmacist open to diagnose last time i was just like <clears throat> trying to get a couple of meds for my friend 
with the prescription in hand in india i've seen like a couple of guys directly going to the pharmacist and telling oh i have headache sore throat he is just like that taking some medication out of the box and cutting and giving them openly telling take it for three days four days that's it go ahead you'll be all right strange things are happening okay now comes another mcq challenge with that another topic we will go and see this is how we are going to approach a case or an mcq or an actual video of the patient then the topic and just what you need to know about the topic if they are going to ask you how do you treat a somatization hypochondriac or a conversion disorder definitely your treatment option should be first line if they ask always more cognitive behavioral therapy second line it's going to be always a psychiatry referral you can basically do anything or give one particular drug and treat or cure anyone okay this needs a long term therapy and a psychiatry referral okay you for completion sake i'm telling you that now comes to this mcq see here a 22 year old man consults a gp complaining of redness itching in his hands and face he has regularly visited another gp for similar complaints within the last two years has been signed off on sick leave from employment as a builder okay signed off on sick leave okay he in in receipt of benefits and reports that he is in the process of making an insurance claim for loss of earnings he says there was one ointment that cured the problem but he had not been able to find any proper medication that works examination showed no skin lesions no apparent rash he does not seems to be worried he has gp to sign in his insurance claim what is the most likely diagnosis come on guys option c option d malingering 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 yes 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 let's see the answer here is malingering i'll tell you what is a munchausen syndrome in a while okay this is a malingering i'll tell you what is a malingering okay just see the first few lines okay this will be always 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 there will be some profit behind this this patient will come and they will feign a symptom for some profit insurance scheme some yearly retirement scheme he may be getting some money from somewhere to take off okay and the patient will consciously he will claim to have a disorder in order to obtain maybe a financial benefit like that that is a malingering typically it will be very open the patient will come somebody's microphone is on i reckon doctor so possible please can you turn off your microphone that will be of great help to us that is how a guy will malinger they will come and malinger to you okay it's all whereas the munchausen syndrome it's little different somebody said d right munchausen syndrome it's often manifested by certain things okay this is how you should be able to differentiate malingering from munchausen syndrome okay there will be chronic history of multiple hospital admissions they'll go and admit themselves in hospital Oh my god i'm having severe stomach pain ah oh, oh, they'll start they what will happen the emergency people will call the acute medicine registrar acute medicine registrar will scratch his head put him in the bed fill out all the admission formalities and he will run all the investigation there will be nothing then the guy will go from one trust to the other trust he will do the same thing again he will get admitted they won't have any clue that is a munchausen syndrome here there will be a pathological lying it's called a pseudologia fantastica they call it you know what is a pathological liar you know typically you can find out when some people lie okay how you will find out there may be a lot of subtle signs like some people will think before they are answering think a lot while they are talking because they will try to make up some story some will have some pruritic signs some people will keep scratching their head while answering when you ask something you can these are some subtle signs they won't be able to make a perfect eye contact with you and there is something called lie detection test i hope you are aware of it lie detector lie detection test they will monitor all the symptoms your heart rate your blood pressure everything when you are actually telling a lie that will change okay 
but pathological liars like these patients won't have any change in anything they'll be very clear very clever they'll be very relaxed and they'll be talking to you they'll be lying to you that is one of the sim one of the future of munchausen syndrome okay and there will be recurrent traveling that's what you call is a call it as peregrination okay or recurrent wandering and they will find the symptoms when you find all these three that is a munchausen syndrome and malingering malingering is little different malingering patient won't go just like that and be ready to get admitted in the hospital if the malingering guy tells oh my god doctor i am vomiting blood if you tell them like i am going to put a endoscope on your throat like i'll push it down all the way to your bowels and see what is going to happen that guy will be like no 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 i am not interested in that there is a munchausen syndrome guy he will be more than happily accepting that okay doctor put an endoscope down my throat i am ready i'm just going to go and i'm just going to lay down you do whatever you want that's the difference i hope now you are able to differentiate because this mcqs are asked frequently you should be able to do there is another funny thing called munchausen syndrome by proxy here what will happen is the patient themselves won't come and tell that he or she is having some sickness instead of that they will put a child an aging family member or even a pet they will bring them some people will bring a pet to the vet and they will tell oh my god my pet is not eating anything my grandfather is not eating anything they will go to a geriatrician and tell my grandfather is feeling sick and tired i need to look after him do something that is a munchausen syndrome by proxy they will bring their own children and tell my child is not eating my child is not sleeping well my child is repeatedly having vomiting my child is not passing stools my child is passing loose stools all these things they will come they will bring anyone child they can bring they can bring aging family member and they can bring even any family member too for the cause and they will also bring a pet animals if they want to this is a munchausen by proxy okay i hope you guys will be able to differentiate what is a munchausen by proxy what is malingering i told you what is a munchausen syndrome what are the three important thing you need to know dr sabin you are welcome okay all right now comes to important thing called sleep disorders this is a very important topic again lot of mcqs are asked in the sleep disorders okay before we go to sleep we should see this before going to sleep disorder in detail i want you to know some basics of sleep sleep medicine is a special field sleep itself is a fascinating phenomenon and dream itself is another fascinating phenomenon we can read a lot of things on that okay i don't want to go so philosophical on this i will tell you the science here okay you should know the brain waves this is asked in basic sciences mcqs and sometimes they did ask this in psychiatry or sometimes in neuro mcqs also okay i'll just tell you what exactly you need to know here okay this column this column and this column this three you should be knowing you don't need to worry about amplitude you don't need to worry about brain location and all you just know need to know the low, low frequency or the high frequency even if you don't know the exact value it is 1 to 4 or 4.5 to 8 at least know some range that's more than enough at least you should know gamma has the highest frequency and delta has the lowest frequency that you should know that's enough for mrc always i'll tell only one thing mrc if you don't need to study so much and excessive things i'm just baffled seeing people reading unwanted things many times people fail because they read unwanted things for mrcp okay the delta waves lowest frequency is a slow wave sleep adult on adult slow wave sleep next theta you know the frequency this is a wave you will see when the patient actually about to go to sleep or in the state of drowsiness alpha waves is 8 to 12 you want to remember it is from occipital it's seen in idle brain when the patient is relaxing he is relaxing in a hammock drinking a cocktail he is relaxing in a hammock or he is just laying down for a sun bath in the beach alpha waves or he is doing some meditation or he is praying that's an alpha waves beta waves again 14 to 
active thinking and cognitive task if you are actively studying if you are actively listening to the lecture or anything that's your beta wave and mu you don't need to know gamma again you need to know because it's a sensory processing since it's sensory it is from somatosensory cortex and it has the highest frequency it can go up to 25 to 100 this is the basics about the sleep waves next you should know about the stages of sleep okay there are around four things you should know first is the rapid eye movement sleep okay they will ask you something which stage of the sleep there will be increased heart rate and there will be increased dreaming and vivid dreaming REM sleep you will get or NREM stage 3 sleep you will get in both the things you will get a rapid eye movement uh, sorry you will get the <clears throat> vivid dream and there will be increased brain activity and as well as increased heart rate increased respiratory rate at least remember that you don't need to know all these things we are not going to do sleep medicine or anything okay whatever they will ask for the mcq that alone i will tell you here REM sleep you should know rapid eye movement there will be vivid dream increased brain activity increased heart rate and increased respiratory rate right and they had asked this thing in mcq active inhibition of voluntary muscle that is seen in REM sleep okay you don't need to worry about nrem1 and nrem2 3 4 and sws s and crossover stages and all you don't need to know all these things but one thing you should need to know in nrem2 sleep there will be something called sleep spindles and k complexes in eeg sleep spindles and k complexes in eeg on nrem stage 2 sleep okay these are the points you need to know here no need to learn anything unnecessarily that will only waste your time okay know the four stages of sleep rem sleep what is happening brain activity increases your heart rate increases your respiratory increase rate increases inhibition of your voluntary muscle activity and the dreams will be very vivid very clear NREM2, sleep spindle, K complexes. That's it. Done. Okay. Now, seeing this picture, what is your diagnosis? I didn't put this to scare anyone. Seeing the picture, just tell me what is your diagnosis? Sleep paralysis. Fantastic. I know everyone's going to get it. Yeah, I know that. I actually wanted to put a video. I didn't want to scare you all, showing all demonic stuff. Okay. Sleep paralysis. Okay, it's recognizable across the culture. Typically, in Indian side, you will go, or in Asian side, you will go. People will feel that when they especially sleep under some tree in some cart, they will feel like some demon is coming and sitting on their chest and they can't move anything, they can't move their feet, they can't move their hands. The sad thing, they won't be even able to shout it. The people will think actually some evil spirit or evil force is sitting on their chest and choking them. But it's not always. Okay. There will be transient paralysis of the skeletal muscle here occurs. Transient paralysis. It's not a complete paralysis. Like I said, it always occurs during the REM sleep. This has been asked in MCQ. And paralysis occurs shortly before falling asleep. The patient just about to sleep, that will occur. And there will be hallucinations. Treatment will be definitely counseling, CBT, sleep hygiene and one drug that can be tried is clonazepam that is a one drug that is recommended the first line treatment never mark any drug here for sleep paralysis you are not allowed to prescribe any drug for sleep paralysis in the stream from the stream of internal medicine as a specialist medical register okay, that's the duty of a psychiatrist but if they ask you what drug it's a clonazepam that's it okay here is another mcq challenge who's got to answer this now a 67 year old man referred as an emergency by his gp the night before he attempted to smother his wife this is dangerous i don't know what happened between them well she was asleep the following day will obvious the potentially dangerous situation he reports remembering dreaming about fighting a beer his father had experienced a similar event before being diagnosed with parkinson's disease just go through the things i had underlined here as 67 year old man he tried to smother his wife 
I hope he was actually telling the truth or he was finding it as a reason to smother her around. And there was a, he was dreaming about fighting a bear. His father has a similar experience and he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. What could be this? Some people acting out, act out of the dreams. They just like suddenly they'll feel like hitting somebody in the dream. They'll slap the person sleeping next to them. Obviously, this is a REM sleep behavior disorder. This is a yearly, one of the yearly sign of Parkinsonism. REM sleep disorders. Another sign, bruxism. What is a bruxism? Grinding of teeth. So seeing in an aging patient, beware. Always rule out Parkinson's syndrome. The earlier you find, the better we can manage them. Okay, what is a REM sleep behavior disorder? It is seen in the rapid eye movement sleep. It is para, parasnia. That is it's a type of sleep disorder. Okay, it is characterized by vivid dreams. Pe dream, people will dream very clearly. The dreams will be very vivid. It's simple or complex motor behavior will be there. For example, if they are seeing a dream, like they are actually falling down from somewhere, many dreams feature something called as a free fall, as if you are falling out of nowhere into the abyss or into the darkness. Many times, even you and I would have had that. They will immediately react to that. They will immediately try to catch the person next to them or catch the wall or catch the pillow. They will act out of their dreams. Okay. Many a times it is associated with violent reenacting, like, like I said, acting out of the dreams will be there. This is a thing that is a classical early sign of Parkinsonism. Always remember. Okay. And EM polysomnography, if you do, there will be electromyographic tone will be increased and dream and enactment can be there. Okay. And there is an association with Parkinson's disease, like I said. Again, here, clonazepam is the intervention of choice. Okay. Counseling also has to be done. This is a REM sleep behavior disorder and sleep paralysis. I hope you'll be able to get it. Now I'm going to play a video for you guys. And uh, just a second. Yeah, I'm going to play a video for you guys. I want you to see and I want you to tell what is the diagnosis of this particular patient. All right. Come on now, tell me what is the diagnosis? Sleepwalking, what is the term? Excellent, somnambulism. Excellent, both of you doctors. That's a somnambulism. It's a sleepwalking disorder. You can see this in many cultures and in many places. Somnambulism, again, the treatment is sleep hygiene, counseling, CBT, and you have to inform the partner or whoever staying with the patient. If the patient is alone, it's always recommended to admit the patient or just keep the patient in a monitored environment or just advise the patient. Because this patient, they'll, suddenly they will walk out of the door or they will go out, go out all the way. Once I've seen this patient, I was literally scared like anything. When we had a sleepover at one of our friend's house, I, we never know his wife has got sleepwalk. And she, nighttime, like, I heard sounds like, you know, just over my head, like, just on the first floor, I can hear this boats creaking and sound. Just, just literally walking in her sleep at night. I was like, literally went pale. And I just woke him up, like, what's going on? And she, he casually got away. She does that all the time. It's like, chill, go. I'll handle it. 
it it happens a lot of people has this disorder somnambulism it has been asked in mcq that is the reason i put this so you saw the video you shouldn't forget it what is a somnambulism they will give you a history the person he or she is walking in the sleep and they can possess a threat to themselves and even to others some people just walk all the way to the street without even knowing they won't be even able to recognize some sounds even if you call they won't be you have to just catch them shake them make them awake then only they will come to their senses okay now another condition i want you to diagnose see the video and diagnose we are going to see the set of disorders associated with this okay What has happened here? Who can diagnose this? Ah, that's not a hypersomnia, and uh, yeah, that's a part of narcolepsy. This is what you call as a cataplexy. It's a part of narcolepsy. It's called cataplexy. Okay. Now this is a very favorite main MCQ point for MRCP and RCP. Okay. The thing that is called as narcolepsy. This is the tetrad of narcolepsy. Okay. True sleep attacks. Okay. That can happen. First thing is patients suddenly fall asleep without warning. Then what he called as a cataplexy. Suddenly the patient will start laughing. They'll just suddenly start laughing. Like what you've seen in the video. They were playing. Those girls were laughing. And this girl is also laughing. And suddenly she lost tone and she suddenly started falling asleep. It's a cataplexy. Okay, flaccid muscle paralysis, they'll fall down, but they'll be paralyzed. They'll be paralyzed, they'll appear like sleeping, okay? And there are two types of hallucinations you will get. I thought about this in detail in my basic psychiatry lecture, hypnagogic and hypnopompic, a hallucination that occurred before you fall asleep, a hallucination that occurred just before you are going to get up, okay? The hallucination can be visual, tactile, auditory, smell, and often highly emotional or sexual or frightening. Okay. And there can be sleep paralysis. All these things, all these things can occur in case of a narcolepsy. Okay. How a cataplexy occurs, just now it demonstrated in the video. So what happens? A strong emotional trigger like laughing, sudden weakness and weakness in the limbs and the patient collapses. Just like what you have seen. This is how the cataplexy progresses and completes within seconds. I hope you are aware of it. I hope you have seen. You shouldn't be forgetting. You shouldn't be forgetting about narcolepsy. Okay. And what do we do to treat the narcolepsy patients? First thing, sleep hygiene, avoidance of caffeine. Many people drink coffee, tea like that, and they will end up rolling in the bed without getting to sleep. Okay. First line drugs, if they have daytime sleepiness, modafinil. That's one of the drugs. Sodium oxybate you can give. There is another drug called pitolisant. You can give. These are the latest drugs. Sodium oxybate is now being recommended in some places. Some trusts are using modafinil. Pitolisant are also being used. These are the drugs that are used to treat narcolepsy. Mechanism of action. Please go ahead and read. Because if I am going to teach you all that, it will take a long time. We have to cover a couple of other topics also. Okay. Now comes another diagnosis. This is the patient video. Who is going to diagnose and tell me what has happened to this patient? This gentleman is sleeping. Okay. This is a sleeping gentleman. See. Just see the legs. I'm sorry about the poor video quality because these are actually actual patient videos taken from their phone.
what did you notice initially can anyone tell me this guy's leg movement and this guy is sleeping can anyone tell me what is happening to this guy leg flickers he moves the leg during his sleep good what is that uh <clears throat> dystonia is complete loss of tone myoclonic jerk i will accept as a dd restless leg, restless leg syndrome yes it is in that spectrum i will accept that it is in that spectrum i'll tell you what is this this is called as plmd just a second plmd that is called periodic limb movement disorder what happens is typically this patient they go to sleep but periodically they will move the legs move the legs here and there somebody said restless leg syndrome i do accept that more or less what happens i will tell you that okay both the symptoms what will happen is there will be repetitive twitching will be there but the difference between plmd and rls is plmd patients will do this involuntarily they won't even know what is happening to them but the other person can observe or take a video that their legs are moving whereas an rls attack sets in rls is a restless leg syndrome if the attack sets in the patient will voluntarily move his legs voluntarily the patient will move his legs always remember that when they are giving you a scenario in mcq and they are telling you the patient's wife girlfriend boyfriend whoever is noticing that the patient is moving legs that is more of plmd or less patient has a itchy crawling sensation and patient feels better when he moves his legs he couldn't sleep he wakes up and he goes out he walks he jumps up and down then he feels better that is an rls okay both the symptoms will cause fatigue daytime sleepiness everything will be there both the symptoms rls classically have this crawling sensation especially in the thighs they will feel like somebody please press our thighs they will feel better okay all right this is the main thing you need to know okay and compared to the risk factors rls what are the things that cause rls most rls are idiopathic you don't even know it can run in families it can be familial what are the other things that can cause rls obesity before that anemia most rls people may be having an iron deficiency an underlying iron deficiency if you correct that people will be fine most people with rls they'll be having an underlying iron deficiency correct the underlying iron deficiency people will be perfectly fine okay and obesity can be one of the causes in the late stage ckds they will have rls pregnancy yes correct diabetes mellitus i can keep going on what is rls so this is the rls criteria okay this is the urgent criteria you the urgency to move the legs that will be there like i said rls is always voluntary plmd is involuntary you will have an urge to move the legs at any cost once the crawling creepy sensation sets in your leg you will have an urge to move the leg okay rest or inactivity increase the urge or worsen the symptoms always remember rls gets worse when the patient is at rest when the patient is active when the patient is running when the patient is moving when the patient is working out he will definitely get better okay getting up and moving improve symptoms that is g u r g e evening worsening of symptoms or night time appearance of symptoms okay but it doesn't means if the patient is going to sleep in the morning again he will get the patient is going to sit for a long time in a car again he will get okay and no other differential diagnosis sufficiently explain the symptom this is called the urgent criteria international restless leg syndrome study group they have a study group for that this criteria says about rls okay this is the rls this is periodic limb movement disorder you should be able to differentiate between these two both okay one is voluntary another one is involuntary 
okay one gets better and one gets worst one gets better especially when the patient goes around do something jumps in the bed some rls people and all run they get up from the bed and run they start walking they will start working out some gymnastics at the night time you can find them keeping the legs in the table stretching them stretching out bending down up all these things okay all right you should carefully able to diagnose rls and also rls no other underlying diagnosis or differential diagnosis will be there except some iron deficiency or ckd or diabetes you won't find anything okay many times don't confuse rls with another condition that is plmd one more condition some people get confused with is something called as meralgia parasthetica i hope you all know what is a meralgia parasthetica that is a burning sensation in the lateral half of the thigh due to compression of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve that is entirely different condition don't confuse rls with that don't confuse rls with periodic limboma disorder both are falling in the same spectrum of disorder both are different i hope you are now aware of it what are the things that worsens the rls caffeine antidepressants okay that can all worsen the rls antipsychotics again dopamine blocking agents again worsen it centrally acting antihistamines again worsens it all these drugs can worsens rls just remember that they may give in a mcq the patient de developing such a symptom they may not tell it's an rls which of the drug can be a notorious agent for causing that they will ask you you should be able to tell that all antidepressants except bupropion bupropion is safe in rls patients okay and when it comes to treatment i am not going to explain each and everything to you but the first line nowadays they recommend gabapentin over ropinirole or pramipexu a gabapentin or a pregabalin is always preferred as a first line these days okay then comes your other agents like pramipexol ropinirole and there is a rotigotin patch also you can try in this thing okay all right if you want to know the dosage i have given this if you want to know you can use gabapentin typical 100 to 300 mg 2 hours before bed time again pregabalin 50 to 75 1 to 3 hours before bed time so that when they won't have any next day morning sleepless uh, sleepiness or anything like that this is how to approach rls when a patient comes with rls check for iron deficiency anemia or any type of iron deficiency okay and you are finding if ferritin is less than 75 mg always replace iron orally or iv up to you you can decide on that all right then review even after replacing iron if the patient still has symptoms then you go for you rule out other conditions such as obesity if the patient is having or any other condition you rule out then you can choose your drug therapy for rls this is a simplified version of the table that is given here rls check for iron deficiency iron deficiency is that ferritin level less than 75 replace the iron if still it's not resolving the symptoms check rule out any obesity rule out anything else okay and then finally start the drug treatment of rls i showed you the drug treatment of rls you have seen what is rls we have seen what is periodic limboman disorder and we have also i also told you about one more differential diagnosis that is meralgia parasthetica what is it burning sensation in the lateral of the thigh okay all right now we are going to get into a very major topic in psychiatry per se i want you to watch the video this is a famous personality called alex jones he comes up with a lot of weird and weird things sometimes some truth also okay and uh, <clears throat> he's going to do something okay tell me what it is
anyone mrcp always gives this clue mrcp always always gives this clue pertaining to this condition what is that what is he wearing in his head come on anybody Our clueless I'll type this is a tin foil hat plenty of mrcp questions use this it's a tin foil hat you know why these people are using this they think that aliens or some government agencies or external agencies can read your mind or can do your mind control so they use this tin foil hat yes yes come on come on yes dr amna dr sabin yes everyone got it dr zarian everyone schizophrenia excellent so many scenarios you would have worked out a person is wearing a tin foil hat in his head to avoid any thought insertion thought broadcast anything whatever that is pertaining to schizophrenia this guy wore it one during his show and show how it is to avoid anyone influencing his thought or any government agencies doing any kind of mind control okay that's a schizophrenia okay i'm going to show you one video i want you to tell me what type of schizophrenia is this then we are going to go into the schizophrenia in depth after finishing schizophrenia we can take a break okay see this and tell me what is this see this patient Who got the diagnosis? I just even gave you a clue. It's schizophrenia. What type of thing is this? Excellent. That's catatonia. Catatonia. Excellent. 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 Yes. This is a that's a catatonic schizophrenia. A schizophrenic case history will be big. There will be typically there will be one thing. I am not going to go through the entire case history. They will have a paranoid feeling. like you know somebody has hired assassins they are disguised as bikers somebody is trying to trace their mental activity somebody is going to kill them some aliens are there he is going to come this that all those things i will tell it's a typical of schizophrenia we are going to delve into the schizophrenia we are going to see everything in depth of schizophrenia because this is a very very important topic for mrcp okay some of the risk factors are they will ask you in mcqs these are the latest risk factors okay monozygotic twin chance of schizophrenia is up to 50% okay if a parent has a schizophrenia then you have 10 to 15% chance if a sibling has a schizophrenia 10% okay then living in an urban area is more risky than living in a rural area because in urban area only all people will have this crazy ideas of thinking right and also the latest thing that says is obstetric complications like obstetric hemorrhage preterm labor blood group incompatibilities something called it's not a fatal hypoxia it's called fetal hypoxia sorry about the typo all these things can cause schizophrenia as a risk factor i am not telling all the people with the hemorrhage or preterm labor they will have a kid that is schizophrenic okay and cannabis use or cigarette smoking again can increase the risk childhood adversity or advanced parental age they can have schizophrenia late winter or early spring birth perhaps due to exposure of influenza virus always remember this is a recent research influenza virus can prone a person to develop schizophrenia people who get affected with influenza they can develop schizophrenia okay these things you guys should be knowing it these are the risk factors now comes to clinical manifestation there is always a positive symptoms there is always a negative symptoms and there will be hallucinations typically this patients will have an auditory hallucination like somebody is coming and telling in their ears something you go and do something you go and jump out of the window you go and jump from the roof something will be there visual hallucination sometimes they may see 
things which we are not seeing something is there standing some angel is standing here that angel is coming and telling me hey you are someone very special you have to do this or some god is appearing right in front of them and telling something these are all visual hallucination sometimes somatic hallucination all factory gustatory hallucination everything they will get also delusions when it comes to schizophrenic there can be bizarre or non bizarre delusion there can be certain delusions that are most commonly seen that there are grandiose delusions i hope you know what is a grandiosity they will start telling oh you don't know me my great grandfather is the king he lived some time back he died i have all his properties i have this i have that either they will be in grandiose spectrum or they will be in nihilistic spectrum oh i am nothing i have none i am dying i am nothing or erotomania they will start telling i have relationship with this person that person whom they never met in their life at all okay then there will be disorganization lot of symptoms just go through that sometimes it will difficult to grasp because schizophrenia is a one package you never know what symptom is present in which symptom which person unless you take a full case history you may not be able to get it okay there will be tangential speech okay if you ask a topic they will talk something else that's a tangential speech circumstantial speech okay they will answer the question but they will tell in a roundabout manner for example of a tangential speech if i am a schizophrenic patient you are asking me did you brush your teeth i'll start telling i have taken shower with a nice conditioner i use birds be soap around my on my body i'll tell them circumstantial speech if you ask me did you brush your teeth i'll tell but i'll start telling i woke up i switched off my alarm i went i read the newspaper i just had a cup of coffee then i went to the washroom then i turned on the light i saw myself in the mirror then i took my brush and i turned it on kept some paste and i started brushing i'll tell all the unwanted stuff circumstantial speech can be seen in schizophrenia then derailment patient will switch off topic and switch on topic for no reason the neologism new word they will tell word salad lot of words they will mix and talk these are all findings in schizophrenia these are disorganization symptoms delusions will be there hallucinations will be there let me tell you one by one thing okay some of the negative symptoms you should know is there is a flat affect what is an affect there won't be emotion let like there will be little little spontaneous movement unchanging facial expression these are all negative symptoms there will be poor eye contact little use of gestures they will be just sitting straight like some kind of statue and replying and there is something called alogia this is another negative symptoms in schizophrenia there will be poverty of speech thought blocking increased latency for example if you are asking me what do you work as i will be like i uh, i uh, i uh, um, yeah like that i will tell instead of telling you ask me what do you work as i am a specialist register i won't be able to tell that i i i i i, I, I. like that i'll go ahead affective flattening there won't be any emotions there is something called evolution or apathy what happens here poor grooming apathetic guy energy you will find their hair messy improper dressing all these things anhedonia you will find in schizophrenic section what is what is an anhedonia there will be little interesting all stimulating activities even little interest in sex little interest in intimacy everything will be going down that is one of the other negative symptoms okay these are the negative symptoms you should be aware of these are the other disorganization thoughts because each and everything here can be again asked in an mcq they will give you a scenario of tangential speech they will ask you what is that they will give you a scenery of circumstantial speech they will ask you what is it okay again about delusions you should be able to know our exams i hope this helps we have covered most of the topics which we have to cover for psychiatry and please go ahead and work out mcqs that's what you have to do from your end if you work out mcqs this will be definitely beneficial for you please work out mcqs we have done our part Okay, if you guys need any help, we have any doubt.
understand the concepts and you will pass mrcp mrcp is not a tough exam it's a very entry level exam in uk you will definitely clear okay all the best guys see you good night please leave your feedbacks in the group we will have more sessions soon okay thank you guys bye bye